Hello, how you doing? This is Chris over at 3D Palace, and this is me talking to you about virtual machines. Now, VMs, virtual machines, are a way of you doing your stuff, you know, your 3D stuff, like rendering and things like that, without actually having to use your own computer. Um, so, it's a really great way, basically, of taking the pressure off your own machine so that you can get on with doing more, more 3D modeling, for example while at the same time you've got your virtual machine somewhere in a, another country usually that's busy churning out your renders for you. It's fantastic. Now, this has always been a kind of an expensive prospect, to be quite honest. I was looking at one recently, and this was one that was owned by Google. It's part of the Google Cloud system. And for a P5000 um, graphics card and a Xeon setup, I was looking at, well, I was paying per minute you kind of have to pay per, sorry, per hour, broken down into obviously paying by minute until it becomes an hour. Um, you were looking at around about £600 a month, and it was very, very expensive indeed. And that included 20 gigs of storage, and obviously access to do whatever you wanted on this system. Now, it wasn't set up as Windows 10, it was set up as Microsoft Server 2018 as well, so there were all kinds of emission errors, and generally I hated it. I'm not going to bother bringing it up, or trying to log into it, but um, that's the Zinc platform anyway. So, na I will say though, their customer service was excellent, but it was expensive and very, very difficult to configure. Now, I then found Shadow.Tech, which is what this launcher is here. Um, Shadow.Tech is a company that basically does video game streaming, and they let you release a computer off them using NVIDIA's grid technology, I believe. And including the voucher I got when I first started using it, that worked out at £15 for the first month. That's a month, you know what I mean? That's ridiculous cheap. And it said that it had kind of the equivalent speed of, I think it was a 1070 or 1080 graphics card. I think it was a 1080. I was like, well, that's not bad. That'll do some of my rendering. Now, what I didn't realise was, this is just the blurb they're saying for the games dudes, okay? The people who are playing video games want to know, oh, it's as fast as a 1080. No, this is actually a Quadro. Um, this is the Quadro P5000 system that I was looking at for £600 a month with the Xeon uh, processors. Now, when you run it, you can run it through your telephone, your iPad, or your computer, or even Linux. And here's my client. I'm just going to click Start Now. This is all I do. and. Uh, It'll probably take forever to load 3ds max so it's done right so you get this window here and as you can see i've already got 3ds max kind of loaded up in the background in it and this window is my computer okay so you can see here i can do all the stuff i can in my own desktop over here now i can um i'm going to make it full screen i know it's going to be a bit confusing down the bottom here if we get double i could also make it kind of full screen if i wanted to but the recording tool might be a little bit freaked out by that. Now, something I can do over here, because like I say, if I just go to my computer, here we are, this PC, right click, properties, there we go. So it's an Intel Xeon, lovely, lovely, lovely. And I can tell you now it has got a P5000 in here. The only thing I've done is I've upgraded the driver because the current driver wasn't enough and in Arnold I put in the most recent Arnold renderer and that is so that I can go over here and do GPU rendering okay and yeah I pretty much got everything I need now if I'm doing GPU rendering on this cloud I'm going to hit F4 as you can see there's a an awful lot going on in here there we go but you should see that I get a very smooth frame rate here, yeah? I mean, this is my Metabine Scene 2, I think this is. Yeah, this is, scene, this is Scene 2 of the teaser. Now, there's a lot of objects in here, a lot of polygons, a lot of maps, including some rather complicated ones for these dudes. So, I've already rendered a few of the frames out. Okay, and... Uh, I just go over to rendering and compare media in RAM player and none of this will have any impact whatsoever 
on my recording because this isn't on my computer. So I'll just open channel A and let's see, I want to go to my rendering libraries. Here we are. And I'm going to pick up my scene 2, which is just here. And that should give me about a second and a half of footage. Now, to put this into context, okay, because this is uh, 1080p. Sorry, yep, this is 1080. Um, it was taking around about two hours per frame, and it wasn't on decent settings, it was on a fairly low setting. Um, so you can imagine how long 53 frames would have taken at that. Now, the render speed at the minute on this per frame using GPU based rendering on my P5000 with high settings is 5 minutes per frame. So I was able to do 53 frames and I just left this on last night when I went to bed. And as you'll see it's starting to get there. It's still a little bit grisly in places but you know what, I don't care at this point. The fact that I can actually render at all is nothing short of miraculous. So I'll just let it continue loading its frames in. There we go, and now obviously I can play it. There's obviously still a lot of noise in the scene, but you know what, I'm not caring at this point. I just want it to render out so I can see what it's going to look like. Because the good thing is now I've got the option of doing that. Because I'm doing this, you know, I've got my ability to render my frames. Right, so I'm going to exit my RAM player. And I'm going to go over to my system over here. And I'm going to pre-populate my GPU cache. Click populate. This won't take long either. Anyone who's got a graphics card who's watching this and has tried GPU rendering on something that's less than a P5000 will probably be eating their own liver with sadness at this point. Anyone who's got something better than a P5000 can frankly bugger off. And this is in real time obviously I'm not speeding this up. I think my uh, computer that I'm using is in Amsterdam by the way. The speed on it is phenomenal. I was able to download and install 3ds Max in about 10 minutes. There we go. So I was able to have two swigs of my coffee while this is running. And now, if I go to render, I've just got to make sure I'm going to save this so that everything because what happens is when I tend to when I log off out of shadow, it'll give me a certain amount of time, and then it'll go, oh, there's no one there, and it'll put this into hibernation, and hibernation is obviously not the friend of this kind of thing. So let's see, make sure I've got everything I need. Yes, I have. Let's click render, and hopefully you'll see fairly fast what I mean. I'm not going to make you watch the entire gosh darn process. Here we go. So, as you can see, this is at half size. It's initializing the render. Rendering the preview pass. It already knows the previous 53 frames are rendered. So let's see how long it takes to actually start putting together the scene. My guess is not long. There we go. And like I say, I can attest this takes around about five minutes per frame, if that. And we do have some various different kind of complex materials going on in here. But uh, obviously, take a little bit of time to compute. Like we've got quite a technical material going on over here. And down here where this Necron is. 
as I say, at the minute we don't have super high settings, but the super high settings I'm anticipating are probably going to take probably about maybe 10 minutes of frame to render. So I've got a lot of hope for this. A lot of hope for this. So what does that mean for you as a 3D artist? Well, let's just crank up 3D Studio Max. And then I can just take this and put this over here. So it's now on my 4K monitor. I've got this in the top left corner. I can see it still rendering away. And I'm not using very much bandwidth just to monitor it. And while that's doing that, I'm loading up 3D Studio Max on this computer. Now, I wouldn't be able to render and do recording at the same time. Oh, there we go. Just to show you, it has finished its frame. And as you can see, the last frame took 1 minute 59, which was even less time than last time. Go figure. God knows why. It was 5 minutes of time before that. I do hope this is the correct frame size. Yeah, of course it's the correct frame size. What am I saying? I can see it is. <sighs> Go figure. As you can see on my own computer, which has an SSD and 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM and a decent, very decent processor actually, thanks to Lee. This is uh, taking a while to load. Let's look out the window. Estimated completion time on my project is, well, nothing like what it says because obviously it rendered the first 52 frames or it thinks it did in three seconds. Right, so now I've got 3ds Max loaded up. And again, I can just drag this in a little bit here so you can see, oh look, I have my rendering 3ds Max scene here, which would be using all of my GPU and probably a large percentage of my CPU at the same time. Did I install my Blumen 3ds Max to a non-SSG drive? I'm starting to wonder. Because it's taken a few minutes to load, isn't it? Oh well. Anyway, uh, let's load this up. So now I can open up my forest scene parts file. Like that. Just let it do its thing. Another frame gone by. It has. Good Right, and as you can see, this is my own copy of 3ds Max running over here. Okay, which I'm obviously able to manipulate and stuff and do things with. While at the same time, for less than the cost of an indie game on Steam, I have Good Laugh Shadow over here running away. Well done, Shadow. So. For sheer convenience, slash power, slash price, I know I used to use the old 3D Palace kind of score method of two happy horses, but there's a much bigger fence in my back garden now and I can't see the horses quite so well. So let's just go with one happy Chris, because this is excellent, quite frankly. Really, really, really excellent. In fact, I can't fault it. Now, if you're going to use Shadow, I have a discount code I can give you that is on the same page as this or will be connected to the YouTube page that has this video on. For heaven's sakes, use the code, you'll get yourself a handy dandy £10 off. Um, yeah, they're not paying me money to do this, although, you know, if you use the code I will get 10 quid off my next month's subscription to this and I'll, I'll not complain because I'm poor, but uh, holy mother of God. If I was to uh, compare this to the professional offerings that I've been looking at, including render clouds and render farms and all this kind of business, you know, I mean, I've got a 30 day trial of 3ds Max installed on this. That's all I needed. And it works perfectly. Um, obviously, <laughs> you may need to basically unlink your own license for 3ds Max if you're planning on doing stuff in the cloud for longer than 30 days. I highly recommend that. But this really was a trial just to kind of see how it was doing. 
and I probably will do that anyway because I've got licenses for 2019, 2020 and 2018 so why the hell not okay so just to bring this back over again just so you can see oh look looks lovely and uh, I'm going to sign off right there so I hope you found this interesting and thanks very much for watching goodbye for now